Yes, I'm Dr. Robert Klitzman. I am a professor of clinical psychiatry here at Columbia University Medical Center, where I also direct the Masters of Bioethics program, and I'm the author of Am I My Genes? Confronting Fate and Family Secrets in the Age of Genetic Testing. So I should say there are some genetic tests that women will undergo when they're pregnant or even before getting pregnant, and then there are uh, other conditions that we test for in adults. Probably uh, breast cancer, the so-called BRCA, B-R-A-C-A gene, is the most common one looked at. But there are others. Uh, there are, in total, probably about 2,000 different diseases for which there is a genetic test in some way. But there are only 23 diseases that are very for which we have very predictive tests that are serious and that are treatable. Uh, there are uh, different kinds of rare cancers, rare thyroid cancers, a kind of disease that enlarges your heart, for instance, and a few others. The problem is that the 23andMe for several years has been telling consumers that it is providing medically beneficial information. Uh, however, for most people, most of the information they get back is not medically beneficial. That is to say that, uh, in fact, uh, 23andMe will give information about breast cancer, uh, which is important, but for the rest of the 250 plus diseases that 23andMe says it gives information back about, most of that is not going to be useful information for most people. So the FDA for several years has said to uh, 23andMe, look, if you're going to make these claims that this is beneficial medically, uh, show us the evidence for that. And 23andMe for several years has said, oh yes, of course, we'll do that. We're in the process of getting it together. And after hundreds of meetings and uh, phone calls and emails, uh, 23andMe never did provide the information. And the FDA finally said, uh, you have to stop selling the test, uh, making those kinds of claims. So part of the problem is uh, that genetics is much more complicated, we're finding out, than anyone thought. So 10 years ago was the first time that someone's entire DNA was sequenced or mapped. Uh, and uh, we thought, by the way, that since mice have 20,000 genes, that we as humans would have 100,000 genes. Well, it turns out we have much less. We have not much more than mice or cows or do dogs. Uh, but our complete genome, the complete DNA that makes me, me, and makes you, you, consists of chains of three billion molecules that are one of really one of four molecules arranged in a certain sequence that create the genetic blueprint that l leads me to have the hair color and eye color that I have and leads you to have the hair color and eye color that you have and risks for certain diseases that we each have. So uh, the problem is that uh, as we look at these three billion letters and what 23andMe does is it looks at one out of every 3,000 letters. So the equivalent, by the way, is imagine if I took a book and I looked at the first letter on each page of every four or five pages of the book. So the first letter of the first page is A, five pages later the first letter on the page is B, five pages later the first letter on the page is an O. That's what 23andMe is doing. It's just picking out those few letters comparatively. So they're getting a very incomplete picture of the whole genome. So that's one problem. The second, pro and, and we can now sequence the whole thing. So what 23andMe is doing, it's only looking at one out of every 3,000 bits of information in the, in the genome. So that's a problem. The other problem is that we still don't know enough about genetics to have very predictive tests for most diseases. That's to say, a few years ago, people thought there would be an intelligence gene, a alcoholism gene, a diabetes gene, a cancer gene, a uh, whatever kind of gene uh, you want, you know, a musical gene, etc. Well, it turns out that uh, predicting future health is like predicting the weather. When you think scientists, the weatherman will say there's a 30% of rain tomorrow and a 20% chance 48 hours from now. Well, we can't even predict the weather 24 hours from now. So the notion that we're going to be able to use genes to predict in a powerful way diseases that someone's going to have 30 years from now is very difficult. And we're finding that, in fact, many diseases, most diseases, most common diseases, result from a mix of genetics and other things. It's not just your genetics that determine whether you get many cancers, but 
your diet, exercise, pollution, et cetera, et cetera. And so genetics are turning out to be less predictive than people thought. So one problem is that uh, genetics is, uh, and now I should also say, uh, over time, as we get more people's genome sequenced, as we get more information, we'll be able to learn more. We'll be able to have more people's genomes to see which are the people that get different kinds of cancers. But at the moment, uh, we're still just at the tip of the iceberg of understanding genetics. So if you look at how much we understand today, uh, it's not that much comparatively to what we'll be knowing in a few years. 23andMe, however, is saying uh, we're going to give you very beneficial information today about your genome, looking at one out of every 3,000 bits of information, and they're making too big a claim. Now, as I said, for breast cancer and a few other diseases, uh, for a few people, there will be helpful information, but for the vast majority of people, there won't be through the product that they're offering now.